Hello and welcome. The rates are on the rise and they have to be right to slow down the housing prices. But will rates actually will bring down the housing prices? I don't think so. Folks, there is one factor that nobody's talking about that can actually bring down the housing prices along with the rates. And this one indicator will surprise you and shock you because this is a game changer, folks. Curious? Stick around for more. Hola, como estas? Konnichiwa, ni hao, salam, namaste, kefhalik, privet to all my friends all over the world. Welcome to Entrepreneur Extraordinary. So when you see some realtors telling you that you should just buy because rates are low, please run away from these realtors because they don't know what they're talking about. Rates are not the only determining factor in house prices and the housing market. And I found this one factor that is a game changer. And I saw some trends and patterns that I can show you in this video. So one would think like, what is this factor? Hmm. Could it be something like demand? But wait a minute, what is really demand? What drives the demand? It's the buying power. But wait a minute, what drives the buying power? It's the wages, it's the wages. That is the determining factor, folks. It's the wages that actually drive the housing prices. The rates could climb historically and it could potentially bring down the house prices, but the chances are they may not. And here's why because without wages, people don't have the buying power. But when you take away wages, when you take away that buying power, their debt to income ratio changes. And at that point only, people will stop buying houses and the house prices will subsequently come down. So when wages increases, it increases the buying power and subsequently it increases the demand of housing and everything else. When people have more money in their pocket, they wanna spend more. It's just common sense. But prove my point, let's look at this graph, right? What happened in 2020 is wages went up. It almost skyrocketed at a historic high, okay? Which tells a story. But then they start to come down a little bit, okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. But let's look at another chart, the demand chart. What happened to the home sold, right? The demand also started climbing, right? By 2020, it just shot up again. So what do you see? You see wages and demand side by side. Boom, it increased the demand. And that's what I'm trying to point you to. So now let's talk about what happens to the demand as it slow down because wages come down. No, it doesn't work like that, folks. Wages and prices is almost like a long train, okay? Think about a long train on a big track, okay? On train tracks. The train will take a long time to move around the village, to move around the town, and then come back around. This is a train, these are factors that slowly but surely move the market to a different trajectory. If the wages continue to come down, then we'll have uh, definitely a huge impact on the housing prices. We don't know that, we're just speculating, okay? So to further prove my point, let's look at an example, right? Let's say you make about $10,000 a month and let's say you qualify for a million dollar loan. A million dollar loan right now with a 3.11 interest rate will cost you about roughly $5,000 a month. But if your salary went down $9,000, and for example, the rates went up to 4.5%, and your payment went up $5,600. So now your debt to income ratio is drastically changed. Why? Because now you're paying $7,200 extra per year every single year. So you're short on money now. And that's the name of the game, folks. That's why I'm telling you that wages along with rates is a game changer. Rates by itself, wages by itself will not drive the market. So let's look at another graph together, okay? Notice that in 2020, the rates were up as high as 3.73, which is higher than today, by the way, which is 3.11. But guess what? The median sale price and the prices kept going. Why? Because again, as I explained to you, this is a train that takes a long time to turn around. The prices don't just skyrocket in one day, neither will it drop in one day, unless there's a catastrophic event like a stock market crash or something of that nature, or COVID or pandemic or something of that sort. So what my point to you is that if the rates go up to even to 4% in 2022, chances are the prices will not come down drastically. In some cases, they're already leveling off, and I talked about that in my previous video, about rates and how rates are changing the prices already in some states such as Florida, such as Durford, Maryland, such as Michigan, where houses are selling for less than the listing prices and so on and so forth. So now let's look at what happens to the median sales of the prices. So even though your rate is 3.73, the prices kept going up, folks. 
So what are we seeing here today? The rates are 3.11. That isn't enough to bring down the house prices. The rates that we are right now, they're not going to bring down the house prices. Okay, not in the next couple of months. Let's look at another graph to prove my point. I know I'm throwing too much at you, but bear with me for a second, okay? Look at the rates crossed when wages were on the rise. This is something I talked about in my previous video when I talked about don't buy a house, for which I got a lot of accolades, but a lot of hate mail from people too, especially from realtors who thought I was stopping their business, but I really wasn't. I love realtors. If realtors, you're listening, I love you all. I treat you the same way as everybody else, but I gotta look out for my outsider audience first, okay? My clients come first, the people come first before realtors and brokers and bankers and everybody else, okay? Let's look at this. So the 30-year mortgage rate, it's going down, but the wages keep going up and therefore the house prices are not coming down, folks. And I keep saying that, but subsequently, if wages start to go down, it puts the buyers out of reach. They can no longer afford that million dollar house. You see my point here? You follow me? By the way, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Show some love to your boy, AK. Click the notification button so I can build more affordable housing for people who are in need. Thank you. The media is telling you that millennials are in the market to buy houses, which is what's driving the prices high. But that is not entirely true. Millennials may have the desire to buy more houses, but that doesn't mean they can afford it. What's making it affordable is the wages. If they're making more money, if the salary increases have been so high, historic high right now, that shows they have more buying power, they have more cash in the bank. And the typical American mentality comes into play here, right? I want everything bigger. I want to consume more. A bigger bathroom, bigger kitchen, bigger yard, bigger garage, bigger office, bigger this, bigger that. I want to consume more. That's the American mentality, folks, for the most part. Not everybody, not all of you guys who are watching this. Not everybody, obviously, <laughs> so don't take it the wrong way. But a lot of Americans want to buy and consume more. I bring this information to you guys so you guys can understand and look at these other tabloid news channels and see the difference where what is making sense and what doesn't make any sense. A lot of people are telling you in these thumbnails I'm showing you, they're talking about rates are going up, prices coming down, rates are going up, this and that. I mean, that's a very incomplete and incompetent and inconclusive determination of what's happening in the market. The real picture is this, folks. Let me show you the overall factors that you have to look at. Let's review them together. So there's interest rates, there's wages. Obviously, we talked about wages. There's supply, builders are a little bit short, and we know that. There's a 10-year yield that plays a factor. Pandemic can play a factor, right? Global economic factors can play a factor. Material supply can play a factor. And for you ladies who are listening to my, my channel, I wanna thank you so much, and I'm gonna give you guys a shout out because I know 30% of my audience is, is female, and I appreciate you guys so much. You have no idea. I also appreciate the 70% males and everybody else in between. So you could be anywhere, but you choose to be here, and I wanna thank you for that. So, so let's get into lumber prices and materials now. So I can give you an example of lumber, what happened with lumbers. Lumber prices skyrocketed last year. Even until January, the prices kept skyrocketing and then it just crashed. So what happened with lumber prices, folks? We never had a shortage of lumber. People took advantage of supply and demand. People stopped paying high prices, okay? People stopped doing the DIY projects. And then all of a sudden, there was an abundance of lumber in the market, but nobody was buying except the builders. So that brought down the lumber prices, okay? Now, the sad reality is, folks, the sad reality is this, right? The people who are hurting in this economy, with inflation being 6%, uh, with house prices being so high, are the middle class, the lower middle class and the poor class. The wealthy don't get impacted by this. And that's what breaks my heart, folks. That's why I intend to build more affordable housing prices. I think housing should be cheaper, should be affordable. You should be able to buy a house. Uh, but I also want to tell you guys, a lot of other channels and these realtors, they uh, send me some hate mail uh, and hate comments that I will not talk about, but I give them grace, folks, and we move on. If you have some facts, you know, please, by all means, ask questions. Help the community. If you know something better than me, please bring it to our attention, but don't put down the arguments without any facts. So next, I would like to provide some answers to some wonderful questions that you have posted on my channel. I wanna make sure I answer every question and respond to every comment. We had over 400 or so, 450 comments in my previous video and over a million or so impressions and 45 some thousand views. So that's pretty amazing. So thank you, thank you guys for your support. So 
Let's look at um, some of the folks who left some comments. Noah Marek says, he just came across my channel. He would like to know something about Portland, Oregon, what's going on. So let's hash out Portland, Oregon. We're gonna start with the median sale price, which is $535,000. The current U.S. median price is $375,000. So folks, right off the bat, Portland, Oregon is already priced pretty high compared to the median U.S. average. Now, the price increase was 9%. So that's an interesting factor, Noah, because price increases is not as significant as the national average, which is over 20%. Now, the median days on the market is 13. Wow. Now, that is below national average of 18. So that means houses don't come in the market as fast and they're quickly gone. So that's where the problem is, you know. It's the demand and supply issue. Now, let's look at more. Let's look deeper, right? The average salary in Portland, Oregon is $69,937, which is 6.1% 6 higher than the national average. Wow. So that explains the wages and rates connection, folks. And Noah, so in your case, let's also look at the distribution of income in Oregon. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm very shocked to see this because there's a big pie in the pie chart for $200,000, a huge pie for $100,000, and, and a bigger pie for $150,000, uh, sorry, $125,000, and also $150,000. So that tells me that the income, there's a lot of wealth in your in Portland, Oregon, and that's what also may be driving the prices higher. Uh, Sandeep Dipanda, also your advice of San Francisco Bay Area. Sandeep, thank you. I did mention San Francisco Bay Area in my last video, so please watch that. I'll put a link down below. But Bay Area um, has not been increasing as high because people are just moving out. People don't like to live in Bay Area and pay high taxes. So if I was you, I would look for alternate options, especially if you work remotely. I don't know if you do, but if you do. Teresa uh, Nof Singer, I personally wait till 2023. So there are some people who are much more smarter than the rest of us. And they're saying, you know what? Forget about this market. Forget about bidding wars. I'm just going to wait it out. I'm going to wait it out. There's nothing wrong with that. If you hear someone drinking water, that's my dog out there. So I apologize for that. Uh, Ron Pagla, you will not own a house and be happy. Wow, what a, what a, what an interesting and yet beautiful perspective, right? You may not own a house, but you could still be happy. So Ron, more power to you. David Poole, he plans to selling a house now and the price is hot, the rents may fly in a good deal. The biggest concern is the interest rates increasing in price me out of the market. And my answer to that, amen to that, David, that's a great strategy. Minor risk in rates. Yes, the rates are climbing, but the prices are also leveling off. And if the wages turn around like that big train, guess what happens? Just like Dallas, Texas, only 2% increase in prices, okay? Leveling off. So Nomish County, Washington, prices leveling off, okay? So that could really turn the market around. So I would wait and not jump in this market. And don't be scared of rates. You know, I like I said, people used to pay up to 10% interest rates and they still live their lives happily ever after. Rates is not the biggest problem right now. The inflation, the economy, and the inflated prices is the bigger problem right now. BGRT, here's a gentleman uh, from UK who dropped on the channel. Thank you, BGRT, for your great comments. I will. I want to let you know this, that if you're looking for properties, in the market, there's still deals to be had. There are some foreclosures in certain markets, so you can certainly capitalize on that as an investor. If you're an investor, there are opportunities to do subject to deals, do wholesale deals, and also do fix and flips and so on and so forth, right? Alex Sears, he disagrees with us that economy won't crash. Well, Alex, I got news for you, my friend. We are not talking about the overall economy here. We're talking about the housing market. There's a difference, okay? The housing economy is different than the overall market. And you talked about inflation. That's true. Inflation is higher. I did post a video for you that Americans have actually spent over $900 billion just in last year in online sales. That is a record high for, the, for, for Americans. So where is this money coming from? I don't know. Is it coming from PPP checks? Is it coming from people making higher wages? Could be a combination of both. But Alex, to, to dispute your point, people are spending a lot more money. People do have more money in the pocket. And that's what's driving the housing prices subsequently along with rates. Okay. Clay Jackson, great clever investor. Thank you, Clay, for stopping by. Thank you for your comment. I think Clay did ask that. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's, not, it's not super smart to time the market, Clay. I will tell you this, that in 2008, I did time the market and I came out on top. If you're an avid investor and you look at these numbers and graphs and charts, you will know in which zip code the prices are going higher or lower and you can make your jump. Obviously, you can never be perfect in timing the market, but unlike the stock market, real estate market, 
in my opinion, can be timed if you're playing the games, play the games right. In fact, I've seen other people do it as well. There was a guy in my neighborhood who moved here from Florida into Virginia and Chantilly when the houses were being built in 2005, and he dumped the same house in 2008 when the market started to crash. That is what I call timing the market. Okay, but I wanna appreciate you. Thank you for great questions. So folks, with that, I wanna thank you very much for joining my channel. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Please look at other videos that we're building. Um, you know, drop in comments. If you have any questions, if you have uh, questions about your state or city, if you wanna know if the prices are going up or down. So thank you very much. Enjoyed having you guys. Until my next video, I love you all. We'll see you in my next video. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day.